Okay, so uh, today we are going to actually talk about um, um, using Yocta project on RISC V. And, um, you know, we've done a bunch of work in RISC V recently. And um, so I'm going to show you what we have uh, done so far and what we can put together. And um, hopefully, you know, it will be useful for you. Um, you can go home and try these things out and perhaps uh, I can help you out. So keep asking questions on the chat channel and uh, we'll uh, respond uh, once we're done with the presentation. Um, so this is a, a bit of agenda for today. So I'll kind of uh, give you highlights of what's, what the project is about. I'm sure many of you are, are familiar with the project and uh, some of you are not. So it would be useful for, for you. And uh, then we'll cover a little bit of uh, how RISC-5 is supported in the project. Uh, and then we'll um, go over how you can build a, a small project. I'm going to cover a one application, but I think, you know, there are many IIT applications out there which you could um, um, use. And then obviously some parts of how you can build SDKs. Um, and of course, if you're not using Linux, um, then there is also support for um, building some bare metal stuff. And uh, we'll uh, end with that. Okay, uh, so what's Yocta project? Um, so it's from website, if you go there, it says it's not an embedded Linux distribution, it creates a custom one for you. And uh, that's actually the differentiating factor when you compare it to existing distributions that you may be familiar with, whether it is Fedora or um, Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution. It basically provides you some tools and, and procedures that you can uh, build your own distribution thereafter. Um, so that being the, the key difference, you can still use the same setup for building yet another distribution. So it scales you horizontally. Um, so we're gonna see how you build an IoT project today, but then if you have some video product where you want to include GStreamer and other stuff, a video stack, Go ahead, you will use exactly the same steps and um, change the components and your policy for distribution. And you'll have a distribution that can do a video client or other kind of devices. So it's quite powerful when you want to design various distributions. And in an in embedded space, that is the case where you have uh, different kind of use cases that you want to tackle. So this gives you a, a unified set of tools um, that you can use and it's quite powerful. So um, RISC V support. So essentially, it supports um, almost you know all known embedded architectures, um, whether it is x86, ARM, MIPS, or PowerPC, and uh, and RISC V is also supported for a couple of years and more than that now. So um, recently, we have also added the RISC V. Um, the RV32 support. Um, so how it is set up is there is a core support where you have all the uh, common pieces like tool chains and then uh, global uh, settings, etc. And that is in the core layer. And core layer also supports some, um, some reference machines. And uh, one of those is the QMU, which is the emulator. So we've added support for uh, QMU for RISC-V for 64-bit. Um, it was there for for a few years, but then RISC-V 32 has been added recently as well. So uh, you could build actually any of the reference images today that are uh, available in Yocto project. If you go to the project site, they will suggest you to build uh, various reference images. So you could currently uh, build them for um, RISC-V 64 as well as 32-bit. Um, and glibc is, and muscle are two, lib two C libraries that we are currently supporting. Um, as I mentioned, it's an embedded use case. You might have a really small system where you want to use something smaller uh, so you can build a muscle-based system. Uh, otherwise, glibc is there. Uh, for RISC-V for 32-bit, we only have glibc as of now in core. Um, and muscle support is in, in progress. Uh, the reason it's not in there is because it's not upstream in muscle as well. Uh, but we do have those patches in um, the architecture layer that I'll 
shortly mention. And uh, as far as kernel is concerned, we are using um, Linux Yocto, which is essentially upstream kernel with few patches to, um, to Yocto projects uh, needs. Uh, so essentially it is the upstream kernel that we are using for uh, both um, GMU 32-bit as well as 64-bit. Um, so there are no additional patches that we are carrying. Um, so um, if you are using real boards that are not QMU, then either you can have a board support package layer, um, or uh, we also have Meta RISC V, which essentially is holding any tweaks that we need to do for RISC V. And uh, there are two reference boards currently we have in there. One of them um, is the Freedom U540. And uh, we well also added Beagle 5, uh, which is in beta. But we have added that support, and it is uh, coming along really well. Um, so if you have um, any of these boards, you could actually build uh, your uh, distribution, actually. And, uh, and if there are more boards that are not in there, feel free to contribute. Um, and we'll maintain them there. Um, in addition to these two boards, we also have um, bare metal support for QMU, and that's part of this layer as well. Um, it is primarily to build tool chains for you know, bare metal applications and our tosses and things like that. And we'll cover that a little bit later. And it also provides a, a Linux mainline recipe, so which means, um, you know, Linux Yocto I talked about earlier, but if you really want to build, you know, from upstream, upstream, uh, you could still build them. And that's what we are using to um, build for Beagle 5 as well as uh, U540. Uh, and in addition to these um, board specific changes, there are also um, additional patches we carry for um, tweaking or maybe you know, a patch for a particular package that is RISC-V specific because uh, when we add a port, then we land it there until it is accepted upstream. So you would find patches uh, in there that live there for a while for maybe a release or two, and then they get upstreamed into the respective package and then we, re we remove from there. So in addition uh, to these, um, these changes, you would also have, um, some mechanism to do CI and and a mechanism to set up your workspace. Um, so there's a little bit of help in there as well. Uh, so you can set up your distribution and things like that. So those are like primary elements you will find from the meta risc layer. So it kind of gets you working on additional board or anything quickly. Um, it's very, uh, the, all the instructions are there. So if you go to readme, it should list all the and specific instructions you need to follow. And um, uh, we follow on GitHub. So if you have any issues, you can interact uh, with the developers um, through issues uh, over there. Um, all right, so what do we support? Currently, uh, there are different ABIs that we can support and also architecture extensions. Um, the default is uh, the RV64GC for 64-bit and uh, RV32 GC for 32 bit. These are also defaults for any other distribution that will, that, that is a Linux based distribution that you'll have. So, um, but in addition to that, we also support few additional tunes. Right now, we only have um, no float, which means uh, soft float, um, in addition to the uh, GC uh, extension. Uh, but the power is that you can easily extend it to. Um, you know, any additional um, tune that you would like to have. And I'm sure that many of us will have different uh, extensions implemented, or maybe, you know, you, you might want to optimize it for a specific um, tune. You can easily extend it, and um, then that will basically ensure that you can build the whole system using those ABIs and tunes. Um, of course, uh, you know, glibc and others, they have to support those ABIs. and uh, um, and in addition, uh, you can also um, I mean, you, you can also use your own forks of these tools if you are working on a new architecture. So it's very powerful. Uh, and I've provided a link uh, in here if you check out 
the Octo project and look at Tune Respive Inc. It should give you how it is setting up for the given tunes and uh, it'll give you a fairly good idea how you can extend it to the one that you would like to use. Um, so we also support LLVM and Clang. Um, it's uh, actually living in an, another layer, which uh, I maintain too. It's called MetaClang, but um, uh, both RIS-532 as well as 64-bit are well supported in there. Um, once you include that layer, you know, all you do is you select toolchain to be Clang, and then it starts to use Clang to build your system. Um, and um, currently, certain packages which are not yet buildable with Clang, they will be defaulting to use GCC, um, things like glibc and some other packages, but most of the system will use Clang. And um, if you uh, want to use, you know, just Clang on target for whatever reason, you could do that too as well, and then use GCC to do everything. That is the default, in fact, when you um, include this layer. So, um, and you can also generate Clang-based SDKs and cross-compile tools and things like that. So there is a lot of um, um, ways you can consume Clang on RISC-5. Um, and then um, anything that is additional packages, you know, that are available, they are basically available on RISC-5 as well. So all you can do is go to the layer index, look for the package that you are looking for, and, you know, you could include that layer into your project and add it to your image. Um, we do world builds, so most of those packages uh, do work for RISC-5 um, in, in general cases, but if uh, in many cases, it might be that you know we don't have those layers tested all the time, uh, and there may be some issues with them. Uh, feel free to report. Um, all right, so that states the status, and then uh, I'll just um, kind of go over how I built a small IoT system. So what I did is I used uh, a, a Yo distro, which is again a Octo-based distro. Remember I mentioned that it generates one for you. So this is what I generated. And uh, then I'm using Simple IoT, which is uh, a IoT kind of a infrastructure project um, that lets you use um, basically monitor, you know, whatever sensors you want to, and you could use uh, to report it back. Uh, it's written in Go. Uh, which also means that Go um, works for RISC-5. And, um, um, and simply you build a simple IoT image. And um, what it does is it puts up the basic system together for you um, along with uh, simple IoT in there. Um, and uh, you could build it for any of you know combinations that I just mentioned, if you want to use uh, smaller libc or you want to use glibc, anything, you could select those. Um, what this can do is um, you could um, basically, it launches a, um, an edge uh, uh, software, um, that is what SimpliIT will do, and, um, and then it can basically monitor any of the sensors you have, um, you're connecting to your device on the edge over here. So what I've done here is, uh, um, actually, I didn't connect any sensor for this purposes, but uh, just basically trying to report temperatures um, over, um, you know, uh, from the same system. So as you can see, it adds a, a node in there. And then um, I've given here um, a small script, which basically is fetching the CPU temperature and it is feeding it into the, uh, into the device, into the uh, simple IoT system. And I've kind of listed here how I made it so it's running on every minute. So it's reporting the temperature every minute and you can do a lot of stuff with it later on. There are integrations with uh, things like Grafana and uh, InfluxDB. So you can do time graph and, and stuff like that. So this is uh, kind of like one value that is being reported, but um, you, know, you could extend it to as many as you like. Um, so, um, so now once you have this together, you could also build SDKs, um, you know, say building SDKs, single command. Um, what it will do is it will include all the 
um, like in my case, it will also include simple IoT and its development libraries and, and headers uh, into the SDK. So I can distribute it to someone else and they can uh, enhance it or make changes using that SDK. Um, so it's a cross compile SDK. Um, if you are building applications, you probably just need the application SDK, uh, but you can also build an extensible SDK, which uh, basically will let you customize the images as well. So um, this gives a kind of a, a good way for you to distribute um, your work with, um, you know, share it amongst other, other developers as well. Um, and uh, the bare metal SDKs, as I mentioned, um, there so far what we've uh, been talking about is mainly uh, Linux-based systems, but in this case, you could also build um, bare metal tool chains. Um, and um, essentially you can use that to build uh, any of the standalone applications and our tosses and things like that. Um, and what I've, uh, kind of like included here is you could build it right now for uh, RISC-5 32-bit as well as 64-bit. There is a bare metal RISC-5 32 uh, machine, and then there is a equivalent 64-bit machine. Um, and it's uh, uh, once you build the meta tool chain, that is all you need, um, then you can deploy that to build, you know, your um, small application or your standalone application that you're using. Um, so this is a handy way to cross build if you're not a tool chain expert um, to get a fully functional SDK that you can deploy into your projects and you can build it by yourself. Um, if you have, um, you know, additional changes or additional instructions or something that you added, um, for example, to the compiler, you could build that compiler into this SDK. So it's uh, quite powerful for end to end perspective. Um, so, um, what we are currently working on is, um, you know, adding Zephyr support. So there is a meta Zephyr that we have currently, we don't have any of the risc five boards, uh, as part of that. So, um, uh, we would like to add it, uh, there as well and, um, working on getting the muscle support for, uh, 32 bit upstreamed. Um, and uh, enable graphics images in core. So remember I mentioned there are different images in core. Currently we only have uh, 64 bit RISC-5 images, uh, which can boot into uh, graphics um, like XFCE uh, and others, but um, we don't have, you know, uh, like Wayland or others working in there as well, but at least we got X. Um, and RISC-5 32 needs some work in there. We don't have it, um, um, working fully yet. So that is work in the progress. Um, the other thing we'd like to also get done is uh, get testing. So there is actually a, a load of auto testing that happens um, uh, in, in Yocto project. And um, so I think, you know, some of the RISC-V community can help there also to stand the infrastructure, but generally that is one area where joining the project might help um, you know, for the RISC-V uh, foundation or maybe other interested folks who are in there, but that's actually a huge value for uh, running tests and, and you know, keeping them up to date for RISC-V. So that was uh, all I had today. So thank you everyone for listening in. If you have any questions on the chat, um, I think um, I can respond to them over chat or probably uh, we can move on to the next talk. Yeah, we'll go on to the next talk. There is a question in the Q&A. So if you pop on over there, uh, if you have any issues seeing that, just send a note to the panelists. So thank okay. you very much for your presentation. Thank you.